hi guys how are you doing you're welcome to my channel thank you very much for stopping by to my loyal viewers i'm so happy you're always here so this is christmas season and i want to wish you all a very merry christmas and a happy new year in advance so for today i want to share with you eight tips to save your money this christmas so christmas season is a season whereby there, there's going to be a lot of spending a lot of activities and um, the prices of things too are going to skyrocket so how are you going to save your money because january is always very <laughs> january is always very you know dry for some people because they might have finished spending their money during christmas so in january a lot of people are crying a lot of people are broke a lot of people are you know looking for how to get money or borrow money from somewhere so in order for you to avoid this kind of circumstance you need to know how to plan your budget how to save your money you know how to how not to overspend so that is why i'm here to help you so that by general you don't be crying so my first tip for today is prioritize your existing commitment i'm very very sure that before this christmas there are a lot of things you set aside money for it could be loan that you're paying it could be your children's school fees it could be rent utility food anything so you know say because this is christmas season you just set aside those bills after christmas those bills will still be waiting for you so what is the sense in you know blowing up your money you know buying things that are not necessary this christmas whereas those important things are still there like my country here in nigeria um, january is always a time when children resume their i think their second term and you will need to pay school fees so that's very important so that by the time it is time for you to pay your children's school fees you will not start looking for where to borrow because you you know blew all the money you had during christmas so set aside your the important things prioritize the existing commitment those things that you will normally do despite christmas or not make sure that you keep money for those bills for two stick to a budget so when you're going, you're going on your christmas shopping i would advise that you you make a list because if you're going to like a shopping mall or the market you're going to see a lot of things that you would want not need things you would want a lot of things are going to attract so everything is beautiful everything is you know glittering you want to buy 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 so instead of that what you just write a list like what i do before i leave my house i'll make a list of all the things that i will need the necessary things by the side of you know the what i'll need i'll put the price of you know those things how much i'm budgeting for those things and then I will now calculate the total. So when I'm going to the market, um, to the shopping mall or to the market, I don't want to exceed that total. Do you understand? If I'm exceeding, it will just be a little, not you know, over. Because you might not know the exact prices of things, but you, you just have an idea. So just make a list, put your prices and subtotal it, you know, and then you know, carry an extra, a little cash, extra cash. So that when you go, you can, you know, you follow that list. Just the way it is. Not that when you go, you see this, you pick. See this, you pick. See this, you pick. Before you know it, you're going to, you know, overspend. So stick to your budget. For three, try bargaining. This is not for shopping mall, though. This is like going to the market. I remember last week when I went for to the market to buy some um, vegetables and a custard of uh, tomatoes. They were telling me it was one thousand eight hundred. And I left the woman, I went to another place, and that one was like one five. I was like, uh -uh, what is happening? So there's no, you know, they didn't you know, have a price, a fixed price for this thing. So you just need to, you know, use your bargaining power. You will not believe that something that someone told me what it, I ended up buying it from the same person for 1,200. <laughs> so you need to know how to bargain because everybody's eye is red. You know, so you can, you can go to tell you something is 2,500, it's 10,000 naira. By the time you're buying that thing, it will be even half the price. So make use of your bargaining power. You need to know how to bargain so that you get what you want at the best price. So for number four, be accountable. What I mean is you already have a budget. You try to stick to your budget and you know make sure that you don't exceed you know that budget. So be accountable. There are a lot of apps on Play Store, Apple Store you can use to you know, track your budget. You can also use Excel. So be accountable. Ensure that you have a budget and follow the budget and make sure you don't exceed that budget. And also, you know, make a, use 
like there, there are apps I would like to recommend or you can use Excel, write those things that you bought and the prices and see if you have exceeded your budget. So just try and be accountable. For number five, reduce social activities. This one is very important because during this period, there's going to be a lot of social activities, a lot of weddings, a lot of burials, a lot of alumni gathering or old boys association, whatever. I don't even know. They are going, there's going to be a lot of parties. So you need to reduce your social activities. So now, if you're like um, a rich person and people around you know that you're rich, for some occasions, they're going to invite you as chairman of occasion. And when you go there, you're going to spend maybe drop envelope. You're going to, people are going to come and say, I'll go and blow your I'll go and blow your blow your low. You will drop. Before you know it, that salary you think was very huge to so just be going like that. So, what I would recommend is prioritize the social activities you would like to go. There are people that you can't miss, you know, their own function. Those are the ones you have to go for. And there are people that you can miss their functions, you know, but you can still represent yourself one way or the other, like giving envelope, you know, sending money. Because it's even better for you to send money than for you to go when it comes to spending. So let's look at this. If you're going for a location, you're going to travel down to the place, depending on the distance, you might have to fly, you might have to take um, your vehicle, which you're going to fuel. When you go there, you're going to have to, maybe if you don't have a house there or something, or somebody you can stay with, you have to get a hotel, you know? And then when you go to the location, you have to give a gift. Either cash gift or, you know, if like a wedding, a wedding gift or whatever. So sometimes it's better for you to just make a call ah, that you're not be able to come or send your account number. It's a better way for you to save your money. You cannot go to all the occasions. You have to limit it. You have to prioritize it. The ones you can go, the ones that are very, very important. Because if you go for Chidedu's occasion, go for Joyce's occasion, go for this one's occasion, by the time you calculate all the expenses, all the expenses of those social activities, you'll be surprised that it's going to cost huge. So instead of going for all those occasions, sometimes send money. You know, just try and limit social activities in period. That is just what I'm trying to say. Limit social activities so that you don't end up spending too much money. For six, limit the number of people you host. So this is Christmas season. Like me, I'll be hosting people in my house for this uh, Christmas, but it's going to be close people, people that I'd like to share my time with this season. So limit the number of people you host. When you're bringing people into your house, you're not coming to give them water to drink. You can't invite somebody to your house this season and give water. You have to cook, you have to make preparations, you have to buy drinks. So this all this costs money. Okay, they all cost money. So you don't go about inviting you know, people, random people, let them just come, 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 everybody come, no. Just let it be close people, people that you would like to share your time with this Christmas. You don't have to blow your budget because you want to host everybody around. So for number seven, be understanding with your partner. During this Christmas season, the truth is that you're going to spend more than you normally spend. Or your partner is going to spend more than you normally spend, depending on, you know, who is doing the, you know, bringing in the funds. So for whoever it is, or even if it is a joint you know, um, funding, be understanding. This period you're going to want to buy clothes for yourself, buy for your children, you know, buy this, buy that. Just don't make it look like you're you know, in a kind of competition with other people. I hear a lot of women say this one bought this, this one bought that. I should be uh, Talk about social activities. Everybody wants to, you know, wear uniform. They're telling your husband, buy me uniform, buy me this, buy me that. Buy me. It could be overwhelming for the person bringing in the phone. So what I'm trying to say is, let us just be considerate, okay? If your partner doesn't have to spend this season, this is not the last Christmas. There are other Christmases that are coming. So let us be considerate. Instead of taking your children or taking everybody to an, an expensive restaurant to eat, why not organize a picnic, you know? Cook your own food, carry fruits and drinks. Go to like a potter cottage in a place like Pleasure Park, you know, sit down on the green grass. It's still an outdoor activity and it's very fun. To so me, I even enjoy picnics. And it's also cheaper. 
So try and be understanding. Don't be in competition in, of wearing clothes so that everybody. You don't want to live your life because you know you're trying to show off, trying to show people that you have. Cut your coat according to your size. Be considerate with your partner. Support your partner this period. And the little you have, you can use it to enjoy Christmas. And lastly, try not to dip your hand into rainy day fund. You know what I mean? What I mean by a rainy day fund is emergency fund. The fund you keep aside for emergency, your savings. Try not to go there. Use your regular fund to celebrate this Christmas. No matter how small you think it is, you can make the most out of it. You don't need to overblow your expenses because it's Christmas. Other Christmases are coming. There are other important things you can do with that money than you know Christmas blowing it on you know things like food or drinks and partying and wearing uniform and all that. So in conclusion, guys, let's just be moderate in our spending. Let us stick to our budgets. Let us not overblow our expenses because it is Christmas. And so that January is not going to be tough for us. A lot of people cry in January. I'm not even kidding. Thank you for watching my video. I hope this helped. Please don't forget to subscribe and also turn on your notification button so that when I post a new video, you'll be the first to know. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous day in advance. Bye!